Welcome everyone to the April 9th Board of Education workshop. All rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty and, and justice, justice for all. Okay, we're opening up a public hearing for the partial property tax exemption for volunteer firefighters and ambulance workers. Does anyone here wish to speak on the tax exemption? Okay, I think I can close the public hearing then, Nancy. Okay. All right, now we have a public comment section for the first part for agenda items only. Does anyone wish to speak for agenda items only? Then I'll read. Um, a maximum of 30 minute period for all speakers should identify themselves and limited to three minutes per speaker. No district employee or student may be com commented upon or identified by name or situation. Questions asked by the public will be referred to the appropriate staff member for reply at a later time or date. Questions requiring investigations will be referred to the superintendent for consideration and later response. All written statements shall be given to the district clerk. Hi, um, TJ McCormick. Um, I have uh, two children in the schools. And um, I'm, I, I'm just, uh, I'm a little off center, a little off balance because I'm, I'm, uh, I'm concerned um, and I think we need to have a, a larger conversation with ourselves as a, as a town, as a community. I'm including myself uh, in that because I, I do live here and I do appreciate a, a civil discourse. Um, I'm wondering, and I know you guys don't answer questions, but just a procedural question. I can enter something into the record via email at some point that could be considered part of the record for this meeting? Yes, you can provide the written statements to the district clerk. Okay, cool, all right, good. Um, I'm concerned because uh, something uh, came, into, into my, uh, came to my attention this evening um, that speaks to, um, you know, we all say about teaching our children how to think and not what to think. Um, and, I, I came into possession of, of, of a text um, that's a call to action, which is, which is honorable. It's a call to action uh, by a, uh, an educator to students. Um, it, was, uh, it seems to have been distributed by a student to other students on behalf of an educator. And I'm doing my very best to redact because this is not about isolating focus on it. I know we don't mention names or anything like that. Um, but I'm concerned because it's not just about a call to action. It's about um, inappropriate language being directed at members of the school board, not by name, but I easily identified by their position on certain issues. I, I just want to say that since the beginning, uh, nobody's an expert on any one particular subject. I have absolutely had moments where I've had to retract statements and, and uh, step off of a, 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 a pedestal and is this related check myself. To, is this yes. related to agenda? This is okay. related to IB. And, um, and so I've only heard critical thinking about IB from the board. Uh, I've heard people with some some less informed positions, some people thinking, and I've done some reading and realized there have been comments that have not been 100% accurate and other people have been spot on. But from the board, I've heard critical thinking, I've heard concerns about funding, I've heard concerns about um, uh, priorities within the school district and those sorts of things. And uh, what I'll be sending to the, to the school board uh, at, uh, in, in short order, um, it's, it's very unfortunate that, that people are accused of, okay. yeah, my time is minutes. up. I'm going to be sending this to you, and, and it's, it's, it's factual, it's confirmed, it's real, and, uh, it, um, and I think it's just because there are so many people here this evening, I, I don't want to stigmatize uh, anybody, so I'm going to forego the, uh, the instinct to make some kind of a show out of it, and I'll just, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, submit this to the board, but um, it's very unfortunate, and I think it should be taken very, 
very, very seriously because it involves an educator in one of our schools and uh, a number of students. So anyway, thank you very much for the time and um, there you go, thank you. Anybody else for public comment? Hi again. Um, I spoke back in November about my experiences with the IB diploma as a senior. However, now it is April and I have finished all of my IAs and all of my, my Senate essay, CAS, everything is done except for the exams at the end of the year, of course. And something about IB that I also think makes it extremely special compared to other courses like honors or AP or regents, this is the traits up behind you. So <laughs> reflective, open-minded, risk takers, caring, balanced, principled, knowledgeable, inquirers, communicators, and thinkers. I wanna focus on the last one being a thinker. I think a lot. <laughs> I like to think, I like to learn, and I feel like in pursuit of the IB diploma, it has given me something that it has given me something to think about that other courses might not have offered me. I take AP Bio right now, so IB does not lock in your schedule as just an IB schedule. You're also able to take courses, which will allow your mind to expand in other areas. However, with IB, I've noticed that it's just, it just fits me more. And concerning, it's concerning to me that we could take away something that students like myself, and maybe not so like myself, can find such a comforting home in. I feel like here at Somers, we try very hard to build a community, and we try very hard to focus on the benefit of the town and of the people and of the students and of the administrators, of course. And I feel like taking away IB, especially after about a year of it being in the middle school, could, would not be beneficial to us. And I, I understand that IB is pricey and I understand the cost of living in a town like this. I have three sisters and <laughs> two parents who work very hard, but it's important. And this type of education is not like any other education I have received throughout the Somer, throughout Somers School District. And um, I'm sorry, I forgot what I was going to say. Um, <laughs> but I think I think about this a lot, and I always debate if I should go to the next board of ed meeting, and then I let it get away from me. But I think this one is really important to go to because also there are many other IB students here tonight, and I think it also helps go to show the community IB builds. Not a lot of seniors could be here tonight because we have our IA up, upload date on April 20th, which is about quickly approaching. Okay. Can you wrap it up, please? I'm sorry. No, it's perfectly I fine. I love to hear from students. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, I remember what I was going to say. Um, I decided to do the IB diploma because I just it just made sense for me. I, there really is nothing else I can say besides it just made sense for me without elaborating further. So <laughs> um, that's about it. So thank you. Thank you. We didn't get our name. Oh, could you? What's your name? I'm sorry, we didn't. Get, oh, okay. My name Thank is you. Riley Pittman. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else wish to speak on agenda items? Hi, Siomara Gonzalez. I have two children in the district. I'm a Silvers resident. Um, I have a child who attends Primrose and SIS. I just want to thank the school board and the community for being here today. I'm so excited to learn about the high school opportunities that are available to my children. And because I have younger kids, I am very excited to share this video with them because they're doing their homework right now um, at a later date so they can see um, the AP, IB opportunities that are available because they're both very different um, children and I know that they're gonna pursue very different pathways when they get to the high school. Um, and so I'm just very grateful for this opportunity and I thank you. Okay, thank you.
Hi, my name is B, and um, I came to speak last year about a different matter, but now that this concerns IB, it concerns me too because I'm an IB diploma candidate in year one. Um, IB not only gives students options, but it also gives students an opportunity, and for someone like me, I was not given the opportunity because I moved here from a different school to take AP courses. And as I started to grow and fix my work ethic and just become a better student in general, I realized I had set myself back so far because I couldn't do the things that I needed to do earlier in my education. And then I saw the opportunity that was IB, and I felt like it almost put me on the same or a similar level to students already taking AP courses, and it opened up an entire new world of opportunities for me, especially in the context of applying to colleges and thinking like a college student and preparing for things like college without having to take AP courses. Not saying that AP courses aren't a great way to do that as well, but for students who maybe they aren't the AP thinkers or maybe AP wasn't available to them, IB is a wonderful opportunity to kind of put yourself on that same level of thinking and that same level of intelligence and intellect in terms of curriculum and asking questions and being around like-minded thinkers. Um, IB has also given me um, a cohort, which is very important, and I did not realize that because while you're switching and trading in between classes, whether you're taking AP and Regents level courses, it's not the fact that you're stuck with the same kids and it's all like that, but it's the fact that you've been able to garner a safe space for thinking and conversation about different perspectives and you're able to watch those people grow and develop with you and talk about things like that and things like theory of knowledge and apply that to your other classes. And the way IB connects itself through the diploma where all the classes almost interconnect makes you so much more of a retrospective thinker and I think that's incredibly important for students to know and learn before entering things as big as college and entering things as big as the real world, you have to think a lot about what's outside of yourself and how to think and how to stop being stubborn and how to, as IB says, answer questions, not with a direct answer, but asking questions in response to a question. Um, and that's all I wanted to say, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else for public comment on agenda items? Okay. So we'll move on to our central office report. So tonight we'll have, and I'm just going to go ahead and ask the team if they wouldn't mind joining us. I just got to do a brief introduction. So we have a number of our students here are going to come around the table and sit. We've got some of our educators who are going to go ahead and join. Some of our administrators are going to join. So there's some tables up front here. And um, Mr. Stewart, um, you might want to sit at the end just in case. I'm just, just, just not, I'm not, you know, just in case. So <laughs> make sure it's all good. <laughs> okay, well, good to see you uh, both. So, um, so tonight we're going to go ahead, if you remember, board, roughly a month ago, our collective board of education went and spent a few hours at the high school. Um, kind of walking the life of what it means to be a high school student in Somers High School. And so during that time, we had a chance to have some students escort us around. We went out in small groups of some two or three of us going around different groups. Again, back to our district's mission statement about ensuring we engage all learners at that personal level to ensure that they find success in a global society. So the idea about one of the careers was we walked around, do we see our students at the high school working with our faculty, working with our teachers, working this at our programs, are they engaged in learning at the high school? And so that's where we really try to just do a nice walkabout. And we went uh, in all different uh, areas and all different directions for a few hours. And then we kind of debriefed after that. Again, with the idea, do we see en engaging learning take place? So I'm going to go ahead and hand this off to Mrs. Comerford as she was there again from the secondary level. Walk that through. We'll hit a couple of highlights with our administration and hopefully hear some student voices and then kind of just debrief. I know we had a debrief that day of, of roughly the you know, same amount of folks, but that was a close piece. So this gives an opportunity to debrief with the community at large and things. So Ms. Comerford, thank you. Great. Thank you. And thank you to the Board of Education for participating in this site visit to Somers High School on February 29th. And thank you to all of our teachers and our students who opened up your classrooms uh, and welcomed us and allowed us to get a glimpse of a day in the life of a Somers High School student. And thank you for the students and teachers who are able to join us tonight. We know this is busy testing season and you're preparing for a lot of exams and other things. So just thank you so much for taking the time. 
Uh, at, during the site visit in groups, the trustees set off on uh, visited 18 classrooms of varying levels and disciplines at Somers High School. Trustees were asked to visit classrooms and look for evidence of engagement of skill and skill building in areas such as knowledge building, reflection, risk taking, communication, etc. And tonight, I want it's my pleasure to introduce the team, these, uh, the team from the high school. Um, when I say your name, if you could just kind of raise your hand, that'd be great. Uh, Mark Bayer, principal. Pete Rodriguez, assistant principal and future principal. Uh, Tara Kearns, assistant principal. Leslie Clearwater, teacher. Uh, Aaron Stewart, APIB teacher, professional learning coordinator. Chrissy Lepkow, oh, Chrissy's unable to join us tonight. Jaden Mead. Nope. nope. Scotty Evans. Uh, Philip Rosado. Nope. Uh, B. Urquiza. Uh, and Margot Levenger Louis. And did I miss anyone? Uh, the ones I added. Oh, got. the ones you added. Natalia Tellez, Madison Kurakos, sorry, Madison, um, Aiden Duffy. Thanks. Thank you so much for being here. And I'll kick it over to Mark Bayer, principal. And Phil Cavanaugh. <laughs> oh, and Phil. Sorry, he's sorry on the Phil. End. <laughs> Uh, so just as a reminder, um, and also to let those know who were not um, present at the Board of Ed visit, um, we did visit many different classrooms, as Claire said. We visited about 18 different classrooms, including our brand new course we've offered this year called Tusker 101, which is a course that prepares students for many of the skills they need to be successful in high school and also life beyond. Um, some of the soft skills that are not taught typically in a um, high school curriculum that are taught through that course, like effective communication, writing skills, although we do teach writing, I shouldn't say that, um, time management, uh, and how to study for different um, things that are coming up. Uh, we visited classes like geometry, our humanities program in both ninth and 10th grade, IB history class, uh, our wellness class, some of the Project Lead to Way engineering classes, and our chemistry class, just to name a few, and saw a wide um, array of classes, which is, Kind of the idea was to show the, our, our, our board and to let the public know, so part of what I want to talk about tonight, is that at the high school, um, you know, since uh, for the last 12 to 15 years, we've looked at increasing opportunities for all of our students. Um, as you heard one of the comments earlier from a parent talk about two different pro profiles of their own children. Some might be more geared towards AP, some might be more geared towards IB. Um, as I got on board uh, 12 years ago, we introduced Project Lead the Way, which is more of a STEM engineering focus. Um, our goal, which has been the goal of the Board of Education and the, and the Somers Central School District, is to ignite a passion in every single student and to personalize the learning. And so we have taken that mission very seriously and increased opportunities for students, while at the same time, um, as we increase opportunities for students to have access to and opportunities in higher more rigorous learning to prepare them for college and beyond, uh, we also recognize that we can't do that without providing the necessary support that students need. And so you'll hear a lot about that tonight also and may have seen that in your visits. Um, so our, our goal over the last many, many, many years has been to create pathways for students, um, IB being one of those. Uh, we have, um, when I started, um, when we started the IB search back in 2017, 2016 really is when we started, uh, there were only two other high schools in our area that had IB. Uh, we became the third of those high schools to become fully authorized as an IB uh, diploma, IB World School, or to, or to offer the diploma. Um, and we're now at about 10 schools who either have implemented IB who, or who are considering IB as an opportunity for their students. Um, so we were definitely on the forefront of something that is definitely grabbing hold uh, within our region. Um, so pathways are extremely important, providing opportunities for all of our students um, and giving them the appropriate level of support that they need. And so hopefully we saw that in our visit. So I'm going to pass it off to Tara. So as Claire and Mark mentioned, um, during the visit that we hosted, our visitors uh, had an opportunity to see some of the robust selection of upper level courses that we offer at Somers High School, including AP courses, IB courses, and Project Lead the Way courses. Uh, we also have courses uh, in which students are dual enrolled and working toward college credit uh, in partnership with universities across the state and the country. Um, next year, we're actually adding an additional AP course and an additional IB course. AP Physics 1 is going to 
uh, create an opportunity for students who historically may have taken honors level physics. Now they can take a, a similar course in AP Physics 1 and earn, potentially earn that college credit uh, in that AP course. And we're also adding an additional IB math course next year as well. Um, so all of this is in line with research that demonstrates that students who, just, just by very nature of participating in upper level courses uh, in high school, perform better in college. And as Mark was saying, certainly since we brought uh, on the IB program and before that, it's been the goal of SHS to increase access to upper level courses and advanced level learning for all students while providing that system of support uh, that they'll need to be successful. So we have made great progress in both the number of students engaging in these upper level courses um, and all the while uh, their performance increasing or remaining steady um, as we do that. So to ground you in some of the data that goes with what Tara and Mark have said, I'm going to bring your attention to some of the numbers that the, the board has in front of them. So we offer over 50 advanced level courses, uh, 15 of which are dual enrollment, which might include Project Lead the Way, as Tara said, that uh, may earn a student uh, college credit at SUNY Albany, Syracuse, WCC, various other uh, schools. We offer 20 IB courses and 18 AP. AP courses, so you see there's a, a balance there between them. Last year's graduating seniors of that group, 73% uh, of them took at least one IB or AP course. And then if you look at how many students and how many seats, and seats are defined as it could be a, a student who takes multiple courses, right? How many actual seats of cl in, cl in those classes? 651 seats uh, allotted to AP, 497 IB seats, and 495 seats in dual enrollment courses. So again, a, a, a balance between uh, all the upper level course offerings that we have there. And among those courses, uh, as, uh, among those seats in IB, 117 students um, took those courses with an IEP. Uh, not, I'm sorry, not 117 students, 117 seats were uh, students with IEPs. Um, so, uh, you know, just to, to kind of ground you in, in some hard numbers there uh, with the kind of access that we've opened and increased those upper level courses uh, for students and to see that there is multiple pathways that a student can take to, to achieve those higher level courses. Back to Claire. Thanks, Pete. And now we just want to open it up. We're here. We'd love to hear the board's reflections and um, uh, wonderings of what they saw and heard on that day. And uh, please, you know, uh, feel free to ask anyone at the table any questions. I, I loved that visit. Uh, of course, I always love visits to our schools. Um, but one of the things that really stood out to me and we went to, as Mr. Bear had, had kind of covered already, we, uh, we went to quite a variety of classes, uh, different types, different structures, different levels. And um, so it, it felt like a pretty good cross-section of different experiences at the high school. And I will say without exception, the engagement that I observed in the classes by the students, um, it, it just made my day. And, and, um, and you could tell that there was something about how things were going on there that the students were driving a lot of it and in just into what they were doing. And that doesn't mean they weren't struggling. I, I saw that. I, I remember in one engineering class in particular, there was a problem they had to come up with. And, and you know, you hit roadblocks. But I remember talking to the teacher. Their support for that, and and I mean that's that's really what we want anyway, right? We we want people to get to hard parts and find out how they get past it, how they get through it, and learn and grow. And I saw a lot of that at the um, in in the courses, um, and that you know we we have the the IB um, traits. It just felt like a lot of it seemed to be bleeding into classes and, and, and the engagement in those traits, you know, you, if you're looking for them, you could find them. Um, that, that's more a comment, obviously, on my observation than a question. Um, but I don't know if anyone has, has anything to share, any, any students on, is there something about the way the classes are run that 
you feel is giving you an opportunity or, or, or to get more engaged than maybe you expected? I, I can actually speak on that. So I'm only in my first year of can candidacy, but genuinely what I've noticed through that, this process is that not only do I develop such a large range of traits and skills that th like I, I think truly prepare me for college, most importantly, like um, was observed, it is every single project or any single assignment that I've done, I genuinely look forward to it and, and I'm excited to do it and it is a lot of work and sometimes it could be overwhelming but it is nothing that I like shy away from. It is exciting to complete it and there are so many opportunities that you get to dive into your passions that truly are so essential, um, especially with our extended essays and our IAs. There are things that I would never be able to um, really work on that I it's my it's my passion it's what I would want to do on later in life and I really think it sets the um, the foundations for that and also with the relationship between the teachers and the students and also the cohorts it truly I I think AP and IB work very similarly regardless to what people think um in another world I would be an AP student I took one course I did well in it but it is and they're both great, and but taking away an opportunity for all these different learners and all these different students, it, it would not be beneficial at all, in my opinion. I also think the diploma program has opened us to different opportunities. For example, one of our classes is taught seminar style, which is something that I've never experienced before. And with the extended essay, although we have help from our supervisors and from our extended essay coordinator, a lot of it is self-motivated and you have to drive yourself to actually do the research and put effort into it. You can't have any final product without actually researching. And so it pushes you to work on something that the deadline is so far in the future, but you have to work on it now to get there. So it's just things that I haven't experienced before, and I also have taken an AP course. I've taken um, Project Lead the Way courses as well, and I loved both, but IB, it just, it keeps you open-minded, and it shows you and exposes you to different things that you wouldn't typically see in a classroom. Um, I'm sorry, but speaking of things that you wouldn't typically see in classrooms or things that I've noticed a lack of, I've never seen so many students walk into a library or go onto their computer and actually read and research. I've never seen so many people start opening books and going to libraries, but I think because IB garners such a passion for whatever you decide on researching for, things like IAs and extended essays and um, assignments, just a part of classes like projects, people take a lot of consideration and careful steps into these things to build their knowledge on things about the world that IB kind of opens you up to. and. In that, it makes you want to read more into things that other people have wrote, and I just think like the fact that people are reading more is really valuable, and the fact that students are now being exposed to that because of IB is such a wonderful thing. Um, to speak of more about what B said, I also feel very similarly. I feel like I have had this opportunity to do research that I probably would never have thought I'd do before. And I think that's really good for me personally because it allows me to become passionate and motivate myself to do uh, research to increase my own knowledge. And I can connect this later on in life to other things that I may or may not learn. And I think that's a really good opportunity for me. And it's really, um, could be really important for other people who might wanna look into their own passions and little niche, little, um, things they might be interested in. <clears throat> During the visit, we went to, uh, I thought it was a very interesting class, was the engineering class. Um, the teachers, I forgot his name, but um, he seems to be very involved. The kids seem to be very involved, and um, they seem to actually be enjoying, like trying to figure out these problems, how to build something, how to make it better. And I thought that was a very interesting class. We never had that when I was there. And uh, we had wood shop, but <laughs> it's completely different. Um, so I thought that was a great class. And I, like I said, I forgot his name, but I think it seemed like he, you know, he Ed was Mato. doing a very good job. Mr. Model. Mr. Model? Yeah. Yeah. He did a very good. He, the kids were actually listening, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, but also, um, I just had a quick question to throw it out to anybody here. I, I kept hearing students say that. IB was going to be taking away. I just 
what gives you or anybody the notion that it's going to be taken away. I just don't know where that's coming from. So I, I think I can answer that. I don't want to put our students on the spot. Um, you know, I think there's been a healthy amount of criticism from public comments at these board meetings um, where people have questioned the efficacy of the program, the value of the program from a financial standpoint. Um, and so I'll answer that maybe in a different way also to think about back when we started to even look at this. Um, you know, one of the things that we had to do as a school is to really think about what is the value added. And one of the things that IB asks you to do when becoming an IB diploma school, or an IB World School is technically the name of it, but to offer the IB diploma program is to take a look at your own mission statement, your values and goals as a district or as a school, and put them up against and compare them to uh, the IB mission statement. And as you went through there and you think about those, those um, critical attributes up on the top behind us, um, and you look at the mission statement of IB, which is to create global thinkers who can succeed in a global society, to understand our relationship to the world that we live in, both from a local context as well as from a, a more global context, um, to create critical thinkers. Those are all the things that are embedded in the work we had been doing as a district. And so when we looked at those together side by side, it was a no-brainer. And so the value added, um, which I think is what the students are speaking to as they heard some of the comments, you know, I think there's been enough it would be, we would be naive as a community to not recognize there's enough criticism and questions about IB um, that they realize that for many students, you know, take a look at these numbers where we went from a pretty modest number of students taking seats in AP classes, we've now almost doubled that number while also maintaining our performance level and in some cases even increasing the performance level in both AP and IB courses. So we have created well, uh, way more opportunities for many different types of students who ordinarily would not sit in an AP class to, be, to get that same experience of going through rigorous um, curriculum, rigorous programs. Um, I can share an anecdote very quickly. I sat at a, a leadership conference a couple months ago with students and heard students talk to each other, o older students, so one of, our, one of our cohort here who is graduating, not here today, but part of this cohort, who's graduating, sat with a group of ninth and 10th graders and talked about the, the difference between and why would someone choose an AP, or AP course over an IB course. And I also think sometimes when we have these conversations, it feels like AP is like on trial, like we've got to defend AP. It's different. It's not, it's not that we have in any way dismantled AP. We have, in, in fact, increased our AP offerings while at the same time embedding or implementing IB. But listening to students talk about the different type of profile, uh, there is, so, you know, Natalia talked about that there's similarities, absolutely there are similarities, uh, but there are also distinct differences um, in the way that IB assesses students, in the way that they go about doing their work, um, in the idea of doing authentic research and applying that research to um, critical problems that help to improve the world around us. Um, those are things that our students spoke to um, as being, okay, that's not for everybody. Some students are much more aligned with the philosophy and teaching style that goes into an AP class. Other students are more apt uh, to want to do some of that more inquiry-based, project-based learning. Um, so I know I did a roundabout way of answering your question, but I think that's sort of what, where, you know, yes, there's a healthy amount of criticism and questions coming from the community. Um, I have certainly see things on social media. Our students are not, and their parents are not uh, blind to that. They've seen questions about it. I've been at meetings where I've heard it. I've been in my own meetings. If principal's coffee is where I've heard it, so I think that's where that is coming from. Okay. Uh, I have a position, basically, I feel that any program must have good, bad, whatever. It's up to the uh, teacher and student really choose if we could afford as a you know, school, from a cost point of view, we should have both offered as long as we can. But sometimes we may have to make a choice because budget consideration, then the, the uh, good and bad you know, comes to uh, question. I have a question for the students. I want to take a real brief survey is that uh, how many of you have siblings older than you have graduated from Somers 
taken AP courses, or maybe some even taking IB earlier, huh? and have discussed with you and made you or you made you know, whatever, you know, convinced the conclusion you're taking IB from a good and bad point of view. We have, what, eight students here? Let's take a you know, quick, quick vote. Have you discussed with your senior or your uh, siblings about this? Nobody? Anybody want to? Nobody. Have a, we have a lot of older siblings here. <laughs> yeah, there are yeah, a lot of them. Are the they're usually the first time through. Oldest, right? Oh, all the first times? Oh, boy. No, okay. That, that, <laughs> <laughs> okay. The, the reason I asked this question is my kids, of course, all gone through school a long time ago. Uh, they were all excellent AP students. I mean, if you uh, look at them, they really, when I look at their paperwork and so on, and I just, I'm so amazed they were so good because when I was a student, I wasn't that good, okay? But that was AP period. So I don't have any yardstick to judge on IB, but I feel, you know, teacher, student, they all know what's a good or bad for them. So if we can offer them both, eventually we should migrate to the best package, okay? This is my philosophy. So that's why I ask this kind of question. So perhaps we could ask some other student that do have these uh, siblings that compare. I, I can chime in a little bit. I, I think what, what happens is we, when we get locked into this, I think that's a dangerous place to be when we start to get into a conversation of which is best. Uh, I don't think we want to get into a Coke versus Pepsi thing here. I think it, the best example I could give you is our valedictorian this year uh, is an all AP student. Straight AP, uh, you know, science is, is, is her drive. Our salutatorian is an IB diploma candidate. Our, and this also too goes to the notion that you know some some language about the fact that we don't offer uh, rigorous curriculum. If you look around in our districts, if you look at the AP and IB combined, we're at about 52 college level courses. If you look at competing school co uh, competitive schools that are similar to us, there are about 21, 30 uh, college level courses. If you look at that, but if out of between our valedictorian, salutatorian, sorry, valedictorian, all AP, MIT. Our salutatorian, IB diploma, Brown. So, and not that we hold a college, a college is not gonna be the predictor of success of your life, but it's a good indicator about, you know, how colleges perceive us, and also, too, just the notion that there are different things that are right for different students. That engineering class is going to be just right for certain students. Our goal, our biggest goal as a district is to try to meet every student's needs. So it's not necessarily a matter of which this is better or that. That also folds into where I see things from my lens on the college admissions side, where some things are painted in, and in, that, in that same vein of trying to understand which is better uh, from a college point of view. From a college admission side, honors, AP, IB, those are the gold standards. And even there, they'll determine their own weighting at their own college or university. So they're gonna create their own weighting system. But that is gonna distinguish students just the fact that they're taking those courses. Um, whether a student is in AP uh, American history or IB history is not going to, the college is not gonna separate them in that way that we're seeking to separate. So I'm not sure, so that, that's something that I would just encourage us to try to move away from. If anything, I think they, the two ways of learning fit different styles of thinking. Um, and I do think that every learner would be well challenged to dip their toe in the other way of thinking, just to be a, a more uh, well-educated individual. Uh, and there are certainly different ways, like I said, about uh, where kids will take a AP courses and see, this fits me, this is just right for me. Kids will take IB courses and say, this fits me to a T. Um, so I, I would hesitate, again, to, for us to try to separate to say which is best, both can earn college credits. One thing that was put out there that I think we need to, to clarify um, is that a HL courses are, will be accepted, HL and AP courses are typically accepted by all schools, um, or when I say accepted, either given college credit or advancement. There are some colleges that will not accept SL courses. Those are the standard level courses. So I think that's, that's one point of clarification that I think we needed to, to make sure we were putting out there. But there is, uh, I think, IB is newer, so we have so much more focus on it. AP is so established. We've had AP scholars uh, every year, every year. Uh, you know, just th this year we, we have our uh, AP uh, scholar awards that we've had. 
We have our IB diploma candidates. These are all wonderful things to celebrate, and no one, no one gets held above the other, uh, whether it's from our perspective as educators or from a college perspective. So what is your opinion on the IB diploma then? If, if you certain courses are good in one way or the other, if the students have choice, that's the best situation. And the college admission, two consideration. One is whether you will be admitted because your you know, uh, course is taken. Second is whether you will save some money in a sense that credits are accepted by the colleges, yeah. okay? Uh, fortunately, my kids, when they go through, there were a lot of AP courses accepted, and they graduate with you know master and bachelor's together in four years, and that's how I consider. Oh, that was really value right, from the education point of view. I'm not saying that IB cannot do that. The question is, if the uh, given that the circumstances and uh, the things are, we are starting, and also uh, there is choice now, are we? as a school administration, as faculty, sort of a, having a strategy, okay, putting us into a pass. That's what I like to hear. I'm, I'm not here to say, oh, this is good, bad, in the debate. Rather, we have a strategy for our school, as you say, engineering, math, science, you know, the literature, English, whatever. We must have that kind of picture, a strategy that is helpful to the students. Do you mean, a strategy, to help, so far, do you mean yeah. a strategy to help kids decide which is best for them? Is that what you mean by strategy? Yeah, uh, the decision is endpoint. Endpoints we just talked about. College admission, college accepting credits, and the student that really benefit because certain strategy. And I guess it's unfortunately not as formulaic as we would like to think, and every student is going to be different. It sounds like your children had a wonderful experience, and that's great, especially that they earn those college credits. Uh, we can't guarantee college credits no matter what. Um, the, certainly the IB diploma is a, good, uh, uh, is a good insurance policy for them, even those schools that don't accept SL credits. If you earn the diploma, they will award you the SL credits, so they'll award you, award you the full 30 credits. Um, but there's no, the best way that I know of that we do it is, is especially in our uh, humanities classes and our English and social studies, we give kids exposure to different, when they're in 10th grade, exposure to different types of assessments that would say this is a, if you, you know, if you feel like that was a good way of assessing for you, that's more of an AP style. If you feel like that's a really good assessment that really appeals to you, that's more of what an IB test assessment is like. Um, but kids usually, I mean, especially through word of mouth. Uh, we've had, uh, I know teachers do visits to classrooms to talk about. We've brought students into classrooms to talk about uh, AP classes versus IB. And again, right now, I understand there's a little bit more focus on IB, but only because it's new. AP is so established, so there's, you know, there's, that has been a conversation that's been going on for years. Uh, I think we've been trying to bring on, bring some new AP courses online and reboot some AP courses that uh, we used to be a little bit more restrictive towards. When I look at now, I'm very excited that, you know, like our num numbers for our AP sciences are going up. Um, and, you know, our different ways of approaching math are, I think we're also making it more accessible to students who wouldn't have gone into maybe AB or BC calc, but they can uh, access those opportunities to calculus and statistics through IB. So it's just different avenues for different students. And I think B mentioned, you know, spoke very well to it before about the fact that some students who may have counted themselves out uh, really now see opportunities. And I think there is good guidance and direction in terms of, of what is a good fit for you. And I think the best ex guidance and direction is the students themselves because they get exposure to it. They see what the curriculum is like um, and they can make, then make the best informed decisions for themselves. Well, maybe I direct to Mark a, a question on this. Each department, like English department, math department, you know, it's whatever, do they have a strategy in the sense of uh, guiding students in this sort of a choice? So I think Phil answered that in, to some extent with the idea of at their uh, ninth and 10th grade levels, giving students um, opportunities to experience assessments. Typically, that's, that's a lot of where you can do that pre, prior to. We don't have pre-AP and we don't have pre-IB courses in ninth and 10th grade. Mm -hmm. So we provide opportunities for um, students to experience what that looks like um, through some of the coursework, the way some things are presented as well as then in the assessments to give students the opportunity to 
think about that and then reflect with them on that about this is what an AP assessment might look like versus this is what an IB assessment might look like. Mark, I wonder if this is a good time to you know talk a little bit about Tusker 101. Certainly, um, I don't know if we'd use the word strategy, but it is certainly a very mm -hmm. intentional addition to the high school program that introduces ninth graders to the high school and engages them in lessons of skill building lessons, but also lessons um, that help them learn about themselves as learners to help them uh, think about how they want to proceed through the next four years of high school. But I know you don't want to listen to me talk about it, so maybe some of our Tusker 101 students could share their experience. This is the inaugural year. The spot. <laughs> um, but the, the whole goal of that is to help students think about and build skills that will help them now in the next four years, maybe in college or whatever post-graduation looks like, and in life for forever, right? Yeah, I would definitely agree with that, especially like with the things that we do in Tusker 101. Since we only have it one out of every eight day cycle, we don't get to go fully into detail of what to do like beyond like school and going into college and stuff like that. But we do get key concepts such as communicating, learning how to send emails properly, formally, and like knowing how to set times to meet with someone or to um, find what you want to talk about with them and how to address them. So I think that's good, like for especially in college if you need help or in the real world if you're trying to do an application or even trying to discuss something with your boss or something like that. Also with time management, that's also really helpful, especially since near the end of the year you're gonna need to start studying for everything, review everything. So your time management with your homework now and with everything else that you have to review seems better to learn instead of in the beginning of the year, forget it, having to relearn it again, and then apply that to your college years and to space out your work when you get a job or if you do get a job. So I think that's, I think it's really beneficial, especially learning the ATL skills in Tusker 101 since mm -hmm. They're not really brought out as much, but they're kind of um, embedded into the <coughs> stuff that we do. So such as like digital citizenship, we kind of go over seeing like what is right, and we kind of go through those ATL skills of how to be safe online and how to be a better person instead of being rude even though you do not know them. Like you might not know someone, or you might think it's safer to post online because you might not know that, like they might not know you. So it's better to know what to do, especially with these ATL skills and these IB um, profiles. So I think it helps them a lot, especially. So just want to clarify, because not everyone is up on the IB speak or on the, the lovely um, acronyms. acronyms, thank you, couldn't get the word out, <laughs> that educators love to use. So um, ATL is the approaches to learning. Um, and you've heard at this board table, you've heard a lot of conversations about that IB is not a curriculum, it is a framework. Approaches to learning is part of that framework and it really goes into the idea of understanding how we learn what we learn. How do we come to know what we, what we know? Um, and then asking students to ground that in either um, evidence or, or understand or ask questions about it, not just accept information because someone's telling you it, but to really think about why is that true and do I believe that's true and how am I able to then prove it or demonstrate it. Um, so I don't know, uh, you made an emotion, so I'm assuming you want to talk a little bit about maybe some of the strategies also? Sure. Um, sure, I have something to, to share, but, but first, Natalia, did you want to still share what you wanted to say before before I go? Sure? I mean, okay. I was just going to say that um, one of my brothers, he did all APs. My other brother, he graduated a little earlier before we had fully all the IB classes, but um, he encouraged me to do IB and AP. I think I'm a combination of both, and I think that is what's beautiful about it. It doesn't have to be directly one side and directly the other side. It can be both, and that way you get both skills. And I, that's what, just what I want to say. Yeah, I was going to bring that up from, from all these statistics on here. Clearly it shows, I would assume then, that most kids probably take a mixture of AP and IB. It's not a choice you have to make delineated one way or the other. So if, you're, so if you remember, um, just you know, again, building the knowledge base because IB is new, um, you can be an IB certificate student 
which would be that you dabble in, you stick your toe in the water and decide I want to take a class. So I might take IB film with Ms. Stewart, but I'm not a full IB diploma candidate. Um, the IB diploma candidate is definitely the most rigorous. You are doing um, all of junior and senior courses, our IB courses, as well as the three core, which are the theory of knowledge, um, creativity, action, and service, and the extended essay where they write, students write their own 4,000 word essay on a research topic of their choosing within the courses that we teach. Um, so in that case, you, you, you will have, it mostly in the certificate students, um, you'll have a lot of crossover and students doing both. Um, where in the um, diploma program, you might have, you don't have a lot of room in your schedule because of the rigor of the program, but they could have taken, as 10th graders, they could have taken AP World, or they could, as um, Riley talked about earlier before she had to leave, she apologized. Um, she is in AP Bio, but is also a full diploma program. So there is definitely crossover and students doing both, and there are some students who are so solely focused in AP, some students who are solely focused in IB. Um, so just to share a little bit about myself, I have um, a few different uh, roles. So um, again, my name is Erin Stewart. Um, I actually worked at Pauling High School for a long time and came to Somers because of the IB program, um, having been an AP Lang teacher and an AP Lit teacher. Um, but I si kind of view myself as an inquiry teacher and leader. Um, and uh, Mr. Olson and Dr. Chang, you asked about engagement, and I think that that is really, the, and the students referenced this, this ability to choose their passions to pursue is at the heart of inquiry. It's, it's what students are curious, and, and teachers are encouraged to utilize the approaches to teaching um, where it's student-centered and supporting and as a guide on the side, grounded in the, in the discipline. Um, and it is, I think this is my seventh year at Somers, and I have grown so much as an educator in those seven years, having already had a decade of teaching experience, and I'm, I'm forever grateful for that support. Um, and so I, I, I think that as an IB film teacher, um, one of the things that encourages engagement from the approaches to teaching perspective is that these courses honor student agency. The learner profile is at the center of IB, IB's program for a reason. It's because the center, or the center of learning is the student, not the content. Um, so on a regular basis, I am co-constructing the IB film course grounded in what I know uh, film requires and the skills that film requires, but the, student, the, the course is designed with students in mind. And I think that that's, the, that's what students are speaking to from an educator perspective. Um, I also teach English uh, 10, which is the embedded honors course, um, which we, um, in, in that pursuit of creating this open enrollment as a high school student that was told I couldn't, flat out couldn't take an AP class, um, I, I really value that opportunity for students to get to choose, and so we design embedded honors to be these multi-leveled assessments where students can decide the kind of learning, how they want to show what they know, um, as opposed to a more traditional model, um, which is one way of, of showing what they know. And then at the end, we, or throughout the year, we conference with students to talk about like, you know, the skills and the perspective of what did you like about this type of assessment versus this type of assessment, and helping, helping to guide in the ninth and 10th grade MYP levels um, what path aligns best with them. I know Scotty and I have talked at length about this because we're I, we I've also been a part of the Tusker 101 planning as the MYP coordinator. I said to do a lot of things <laughs> um, uh, and um, that's uh, kind of at the heart of the Tusker 101 and the subsequent t sophomore seminar is to help students think about and also communicate how they like to learn um, and identify, like, so one of the lesser known approaches to learning skills is I understand my personal learning preferences and I can choose strategies in certain disciplines and subjects that align with how I like to learn, but first you have to have that metacognition. Um, so we, de we designed Tusker One around what skill is really required to be a thinker? What skill is required to be a communicator? Um, do you wanna share a little bit about, because you're not thinking IB, right? Um. I'm not thinking fully into IP. I'm definitely thinking of like mixing my classes since 
I'm more STEM based. I definitely want to do STEM and I've been wanting to do classes such as AP Calc BC. So with the IB diploma program, I can't really do that since I won't have room. But I would still love to take some IB classes to work on some of my writing skills such as like um, IB English. I think that will definitely be good or even um, IB physics and then going on further into an AP physics in the in my other years or actually since the way they offer it, it would be probably AP Physics 1 in my 11th grade year, and then in my 12th grade, I would do IB Physics, just so I could get the understanding of both ways. So then when I go into college, I'll have whatever I find best in my way of learning, and then adapt that into my college life. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, and the last thing that I would add as an AP teacher is you know the difference between an um, the approaches to teaching in an AP class and an, and an IB class from my English perspective is um, some students really, really enjoy, like I'm gonna be assessed this one way. I know that the test is gonna be on this date. I know I'm gonna, I wanna create an outline and I'm gonna study guide. Like they like that type of um, more traditional approach and they like it to be a little bit more concrete whereas IB tends to be a little bit more open um, a lot more, again, honoring that agency. And for some students, I think that that can be overwhelming. Um, and so I, I think in terms of like, it's just, they're both great options for all students. Um, one more last thing about uh, Dr. Chang, your question about um, how it translates into college. Um, I've ha I have the privilege of having many of my IB film students who are not diploma candidates still in contact with me. Um, one su such student just reached out to me who is now graduating from Quinnipiac, and she reached out just to tell me that um, her, s her t time as a senior, she only took one year of a two-year IB film course, her time as a senior has set her up for success in terms of the analytical and research skills necessary for her post-grad applications. And so she reached out to share that. Um, I have a number of students who, again, non-DP candidates who um, are at Savannah College of Art and Design. And they're now, they were granted access into their program of study, which a lot of times doesn't happen for freshmen. You have to do all the liberal arts and you don't necessarily get into your um, major right away. Um, but because of her IB experience, she was able to skip a number of um, prerequisites. Um, so I think it translates not just as credits, but as year, like skipping years um, or classes all entirely because you, all, you come ready prepared with some of these skills. Um, and these are just a few um, students that have shared those things with me. Yeah, I have an anecdote that we had recently. Um, so we hosted a visit from a local school who was looking to expand to MIP, um, and they shared a, a story that happened to be actually the child of one of our um, educators here in the district who was originally in the diploma program um, during senior year. I don't know the full details, so if I get any of this wrong, I apologize. Um, did not continue with the core, so you have to do all three of the TOK um, extended essay and creative creativity action and service in order to get the diploma program and then you have to get, get a certain score. Um, did not continue with the core but took pretty much the diploma program minus that. Did not get the diploma at the end of the program um, and entered college as a sophomore. So there, you know, there are lots of different stories about the, the similar to AP where students are either advancing um, so they can skip courses that are normally requirements for freshmen or are actually getting college credits and, and um, applying those to their uh, overall credits they needed to graduate. So just another anecdote. Okay. I have one more question that on this, uh, whether we should uh, extend the IB program to middle school, to SIS, even to uh, Primrose, because it's been bothering me. It's already been thinking. extended to middle school. Right? I understand. Okay. It's been just bothering check. me whether we are taking a right strategy or not, okay? Learning, first you have you know, learning interests. How do you build students? Learning interests is the key. If you don't have interests, you don't learn. Second, you have to set your goals and learn how to set the goals. Then you time management, as the student already pointed out. The learn learning, you know, habit is built from young to high school. You don't wait till high school, right? 
hopefully by, you, by the time you get to high school, you really have some of those elements that pro, you know, uh, provide you the uh, ingredients to, to succeed. Now, is IB program, okay, good in such sense? I heard some, you know, you know help me in, in uh, motivate me, help me to time management, help me this and that. Whether that extending to lower grade, even to, you know, primrose, is a solid way of doing that. I'd like to see evidence, and I'd like to be convinced, yes, that's really true. Then we should be all wholeheartedly pushed into this you know, program down to our early ages so that at the end, you know, our diploma program will be you know, super successful and so on. A am I you know, getting that kind of a sort of a, as, as our strategy or our expectation? Um, I can speak to that a little. Um, she isn't here, but my, I have a friend who lives in Florida. Her name is Mia Garcia, and her school is actually an IB school that integrates IB into their middle school. And we have had conversations. You have Mike a little closer. I'm so sorry. Um, but I've spoken with her and had multiple conversations about both of our IB experiences, mine being that IB was introduced to me as a junior, and she has been um, pre like preparing for IB and college-related courses since middle school. Um, and it's not that our experiences, one is better than the other, but she definitely felt more prepared going to IB with having the skills available to her in middle school and being able to develop the IB learner profile traits and things like time management, things like garnering passion, and then putting it into things like the extended essay and all the things that IB requires you to do in high school. Having that as your foundation in middle school was definitely helpful for her. and made her a very complex thinker at a very young age, which kind of put her ahead of some of the rest of the people. And just to kind of reignite a bit of the conversation we had earlier, I know it's a little relevant now, but I got to speak to multiple admissions officers for colleges I was visiting because I'm an art student and I had to go to portfolio days and I had asked them if they prefer IB or AP, is there a certain way they perceive, birth, uh, perceive both? And they responded to me with, it's not that they view one over the other, it definitely differentiates you from other college candidates, but it's the way that it has helped your brain and developed you as a thinker and a candidate for that specific college. So it's not that you need to choose one over the other because it'll benefit more students. It's having both be an option for the different kinds of learners that are within our schools that appeals to colleges. To piggyback off that, and I might be wrong on this, I'm trying to remember, because I know you gave us that big binder of all that research in the beginning of the year, and I believe there were studies that showed in international schools, but also in a U.S. school district, of how NYP um, and the studies showed that kids were more likely to try for advanced level courses, whether they were AP or DP, right. didn't, didn't mean IB schools. Right. Um, so it's not a matter of, like you said, picking one over the other. It's a matter of preparing those approaches to learning and approaches to, to, to teaching skills at those young ages with using the student, still that New York State curriculum. Right. So I don't know if that, that yeah. was a good time to kind of maybe transition into that piece of NYP of how it's not an optional piece and it's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. that I, age group probably question? is yeah. appropriate. Yeah. A lot of us think it's asked questions. Yeah. <laughs> So I just kind of circling back to the students, because we've got you here, and so we can ask you questions. Um, I, my curiosity, so most of you did not, like is the classes as a, for the diploma program are your first IB classes you've taken? Were you part of the middle years framework classes at all? No, because you're kind of right ahead of that, right? Okay, so then I guess, what, what did you know, because you've talked about how you find the classes engaging, I get a couple of your different words here. Are you excited? So if you could tell us any like specific examples or favorite examples of the difference from when you went from English or history in ninth and 10th grade to an IB course, you know, what, what was it that made it that different? Did you feel that same engagement in your ninth and 10th grade classes or was there something different about them when you hit the IB courses and the way they were taught there? Sort of what was that difference and what's something that really a favorite example maybe? Um, I think for me the biggest difference, I don't have anything to compare TOK to of course, but because it's taught seminar style, it's just something that I've never been exposed to. I never had the opportunity to speak so much in a class and I think that was a great opportunity. I, like I said, I don't have anything to really compare it to like as I do for English 10 to IB English, but it's just something that's new and a um, 
<laughs> a skill that people need to have for when they grow up. Okay. Um, I can also talk about in history. Um, I think a lot of the times in previous history classes, we didn't write a lot of essays. We did maybe once per year. And now in IB history, we're writing one every th three to two months. And it's like amazing because these are things that we're gonna have to do in college and skills that you just need to have. You need to be able to develop our arguments and create essays like efficiently. efficiently. And what's amazing about IB history is that um, our teacher like encourages us to not only just answer the question and the prompt, but to form an arm argument and to find a counterclaim and really connect it to other things. So I've connected something in like World War II to global conflicts happening right now currently in the world. So it's, it's, um, it's, it's nice. It's not too <laughs> often that you hear somebody saying they're happy that they have to do more writing, <laughs> more essays. Well, so. two, two to three months, one paper is not enough. <laughs> <laughs> right? Well, we do other different assignments. <laughs> Thanks for clarifying. There's a lot of other things you do. Exactly. <laughs> I got a question for the students. Is there certain aspects that you'd like, if you can make a suggestion, or certain parts that you don't like, or you know, certain areas or a certain part of the curriculum where you're like, oh man, that's that's a, that's the part that I I would throw a suggestion out to the administrators right here and say, you know, what can we change up a bit, or what's one of the things that aren't the best part of this, or where did I where did I struggle? Um, I think IB approaching it can be scary at first, and it definitely is for incoming sophomores, although. We do have a lot of sophomores interested in IB next year, and I am excited to see what the next group looks like. There is definitely a lot of talk of fear and a lot of talk of people have never taken on something as large as IB before. And I don't think it's a matter of our school doesn't prepare you for it, but I do think it's a matter of maybe students feel like a little intimidated by it. However, um, IB is not something where they throw you out into the deep end of the pool for you to drown. They do send a buoy, and your teachers are your buoy, and you're given multiple books and sources to read. and guides to had kind of have a parent to hold your pinky along the way, but not your whole hand. So although IB can seem a little scary at times, I do think um, the program as a whole is very beneficial and it may have its flaws in terms of how much workload they're putting onto the students. They're not thrown out without help from teachers and everything else that IB gives you as a um, as a program from the website itself and then the teachers who take the time to really um, understand all aspects of IB and how to make sure students don't feel like they're drowning within all their work. Yeah, and to back up what B is saying, uh, as a year two candidate, um, what I've seen personally is that year one is just a lot of like getting adjusted and building knowledge for year two. And a lot of the essay writing skills that you learn in year one is very useful in year two when you're doing all your IAs in the span of a couple of weeks. And it really helps you like stay motivated and it helps you learn how to like construct arguments uh, efficiently. And you do get a lot of like help. You can also always ask like a friend <laughs> if you want help. Um, you do get uh, feedback from the teachers one time, just official feedback. And I have not been disappointed with feedback so far. I think it's all the teachers are really good at trying to help me succeed personally. And yeah. Well, I know it's getting a little bit late in the evening, especially for our high school students who have that nice early start in the morning. So uh, I know I started off the evening and, and I just wanted to say that listening and hearing to our student experiences I'm getting a chance to do the, the walkabout at the high school. I, I honestly, I just, I'm blown away. I really am just blown away. How articulate you are, how confident you are, the decision making that you are making now and where you're thinking about in the future. I just, AP, IB, Project Lead the Way, whatever it is, the energy <clears throat> and the desire to have it come from your heart is so evident today, it was evident that day. So again, a kudos to our teachers, the administrators at the high school, the families that support our kids. And you mentioned the numbers. Yes, I just had an understanding that we're doubling that actually. It looks like next year almost 31 kids who are 
interested in doing the IB program. Also, though, we mentioned about the science earlier, our science numbers from students, because the AP was added for the science class and physics one, those numbers are going up significantly. So connecting with your passion is one of the things we really work diligently on. We talked the other day a little bit about with some of our colleagues this idea about having access to the opportunities that we talked about today. That's one piece, and if I had, I won't take my coin out of my pocket, but I have a coin in my pocket. To cut on one side of that coin, this idea about providing access. Can I get into a class? Can I go ahead and have the option? Is there AP, is there IB, is there Project Lead the Way? One important part, absolutely. The other side, do I belong? Do I feel I belong in that class? Yes. Looking at the numbers, looking at those pieces, that return on investment, however you want to describe that, we have more students ever that have taken IB courses, more than ever have taken AP, more than ever Project Lead the Way, and it continues to grow more ever than we've had before with our embedded honors. So you have the access, and you bet. You belong in Somers in those classes. You are all amazing educated children, and I can't wait to hear what you later in the spring. So I know today is a long day, but wow, um, I will remember tonight for sure. So thank you, thank you very much. We're going to go ahead and I'll let the board say thank you. We're going to time out so you guys can get out of here. you got classes first thing in the morning. And so, more of it's all right. We're going to be kind of scoot out. We'll go ahead and do our next item. So, uh, admin, everybody, thank you so much for being here tonight. So, we'll go ahead and let you guys scoot. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We're going to go ahead and just reconvene our meeting here, folks. So, thanks for letting our... High school faculty and Not our off the students uh, head out there a little bit. So we'll go ahead and uh, just a, an item or two left here. So uh, we'll go ahead and again, coming out of that okay. part of the conversation, I know it's, a, it's a, little <laughs> a little bit of a left turn, but we're going to go ahead and look at board action on number eight here. So I'll kick that back to yourself there and we'll get ready to close. Okay. Um, so, Nancy, do I have to read the whole? No, no, no. <laughs> you can just start and then read the bottom. Okay, whereas under section 466-A of the New York Real Property Tax Law, taxing jurisdictions, including school districts, may extend a partial real property tax exemption to enroll members of an incorporated volunteer fire company, fire department, or incorporated voluntary ambulance service, and I'll skip to the be right. it resolved clauses. Yes. Is that, yes. Be it, re be it further resolved that, oh sorry, now therefore be it resolved pursuant to RPTL section 466-A that a partial real property tax exemption of 10% of the assessed value of property that is the primary residence of a member of an incorporated volunteer fire company, fire department, or incorporated voluntary ambulance service with at least two years of service as certified by the property owners, sorry, as certified by the incorporated volunteer fire company, fire department, or incorporated voluntary ambulance service in which the property owner serves and that meets RPTL section 466-A1's eligibility standards shall be implemented and recognized for purposes of the levy of Somers Central School District taxes and be it further resolved that this partial real property tax exemption shall further be extended to property owners eligible for the purposes specified in RPTL section 466-A3, 4, and 5, firefighters and ambulance workers with 20 years of active service and unremarried spouses of firefighters and ambulance workers killed in the line of duty or deceased for purposes of the levy of Somer Central School District taxes and be it further resolved that the partial real property tax exemption authorized under this resolution shall be effected beginning with the 2024 Town of Somers May 1st, 2024 taxable status date assessment roll and be it further resolved that the district clerk shall deliver a copy of this resolution to the assessor of the Town of Somers. I have a motion? So, so moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Objections? Abstentions? Okay. All right. Now comes to our second public comment section of the night. Does anyone have any more public comments? Okay. So all speakers will promptly identify themselves, a maximum of a 30-minute period. It's limited to three minutes per speaker. No district employee or student may be commented upon or identified by name or situation. Questions asked by the public will be referred to the appropriate staff member for reply at a later time or date. Questions requiring investigations will be referred to the superintendent for consideration and later response. All written statements shall be given to the district clerk. Hi, my name is Tina Palushai. I had originally came here to ask about the number of certificates, IB certificates that were um, given. And then I got a text or a copy of a text. Um, and I'm going to read a couple of excerpts that I thought were interesting. I'll read one actually here. 
This is from a student to other students. If someone could reach out to year ones, that would be amazing. Also, everything I said here came from a specific educator. I will forward an email with a copy of this and her name um, to you after this meeting. Uh, everything I said here came from educator, but she told me to make sure it's not known that she told us to do any of this. So this is us taking initiative. I think we're not going to talk about personnel matters or specific situations, like regardless of if you put a name or anything. I don't want to identify anything in, in here. I, I'm, I don't understand. Did, did, did I do that? No, I'm, I'm not saying that you named a specific name. I understand you left it out. Mm -hmm. But we're not going to talk about specific student situations so that they could be identified by, it's, it's by name or situation. So. OK, so uh, can I? Can oh, you forward okay. it to the district clerk? Uh, yes. Okay. It's not known that she told us to do any of this, so this is us taking initiative, not educator telling us. Anyways, helping out would be greatly appreciated to show those racist F faces that IB matters. Okay, so. Um, so yeah, I will be emailing it to all of you and I will be um, copying in the educator. This should be con this should concern all of you, including parents, um, whose children are being treated seemingly like minions by this educator. Thank you. Does anyone else have public comment? Yeah. Hi, Sue Mara Gonzalez again. Uh, Summers resident, uh, Kism District, SIS from us. Um, I just wanted to say that uh, board member Ife made a comment about how uh, you can't really start this in high school, right? And I think that's why I've been really attentive at recent board meetings about the middle years program, primary years program. Okay, I finally got that one. Um, and just, I, I keep feeling jealous at these meetings. Like when I hear about the project-based learning, the, variety, the varied opportunities. I know that there's tons of opportunities in SIS and Primrose as well. Um, but this access to project-based learning and what I believe sounds like alternate assessment is really exciting for me um, as, a, as a parent, as an educator. Um, I do have a couple of questions. Um, the uh, IB teacher that was here had mentioned, um, you know, she has grown a lot since her transition to the district, and I wanted to know what, about, what learning experiences in particular um, led to her feeling that way. Um, I know that anyone can teach AP. There are optional professional development sessions that they can attend, uh, but it's not a requirement. You just upload your syllabus and you're good to go. Um, I was curious about the training required for IB teachers because it sounds like it's a big shift. Um, and I think to speak the same language and to be able to grade using a rubric um, and provide feedback around specific skills and supporting kids with iterations of, of whether it's essays or projects or um, learning experiences that are tailored to their specific needs, sounds like a heavy lift. So I'd be curious to learn more um, because it sounds like there's a lot of opportunity there for education, um, for growth for the educators um, in order to meet student need. Um, overall, I'm just so impressed. Like Project Lead the Way, Embedded Honors, uh, AP, IB, increased access despite uh, increased access to AP and IB, increased uh, scores on AP exams despite increased enrollment, widened access, it just sounds really exciting. I'm also impressed that I just seeing again and again students, um, educators, director of guidance, board member, like being so thoroughly involved in the school and the instructional leadership in this district that extends from the superintendent to all of the, the members that were here today, I just, it's, it's very impressive. Um, and I'm very, very grateful that instruction is a priority in our district. Um, I had so many more comments that I was writing down, but I didn't want to miss my opportunity to speak. Um, just thank you, thank you, thank you. I know I said it before. I'd love to see more of the rubrics and examples of projects. I know there was a limited opportunity to hear about those specifics. Um, I know that board member Heidi had, re had requested a little bit more detail, and I appreciate that. Um, but just learning more um, to help me support my children as they get older and thinking through their opportunities in the district. Um, and again, I would continue to, to like to hear more. I know that last week's board meeting, um, the primary years program, there seems to be still a lot, not last week, last board meeting, um, there seems to be other questions about the extension of the primary years program. I'd love to learn more um, because I think that there's a lot of opportunity here that um, I'm very excited about for my children. So thank you again. Okay. It brings us to board comments. 
Uh, <clears throat> uh, just thanks to the students and administrators for coming in and uh, giving their points of view. Uh, you know, I think it's good to have open dialogue, uh, and we should constantly be questioning everything, uh, just through any projects, any uh, curriculum, having an open dialogue and constantly questioning and being able to back up your points of view. And, you know, there's, there's people who have differing opinions on things and making sure, and especially that we're using tax dollars and other people's money, make sure we're getting the proper return on investment. So by challenging things and pushing to get uh, direct answers and constantly proving the value of programs, I think, is good. It shouldn't be taken as offensive. Uh, I've seen more businesses and more government projects fail because nobody's willing to question something or push back or speak out when something's going wrong. Uh, but, you know, being able to back that up and prove your point and showing it's right, you know, just further strengthens, strengthens uh, what you're doing. Uh, you know, and uh, Mr. Bear said earlier, don't accept things because somebody tells you. And yet constantly questioning something and pushing on it and, you know, being able to back up your point of view is, is a good thing. Uh, you know, one of the biggest things I learned from uh, being in military intel, if everybody's thinking the same way, no one's thinking. So having different points of views, pushing things, you know, nothing's going to be perfect, and having people push back and maybe tweak certain things here and there, uh, you know, is very helpful and could save us a lot of time and money. But again, you know, it was good to have the kids here and the administrators and, you know, thank them for coming out. No, I pretty much agree. Well, I, I think with, I think you said that pretty well done, um, and, and that's why that's why we. It's important to ask questions, dive in, look at the evidence, look at the results, look at where the opportunities are. Very important, and and I, I think that's what we keep doing, and and that's what we should and, and need to keep doing. Um, so, and, and thank you uh, to the students. For, for coming out here. It's never easy to get up, um, especially if you remember that there is a camera. I find it easier to forget. <laughs> but, um, but getting out here and, and just being able to talk in front of people and to share personal experiences, um, I'm impressed and proud of all of them. Um, so thank you. Um, I already asked too many questions, turning into much time. But I'm really interested in you know the end result in the longer term. So I think some questions are important. Uh, I would like to leave one more question to the audience and uh, specifically uh, our faculties, because I think uh, when we do these workshops in a public forum, sometimes uh, slightly constrained, constrained in a sense that. We, we don't want to um, speak too openly in some ways of that may uh, be disruptive, disruptive to the purpose we want to make progress. So I wonder whether we should have workshops just to for have, say, faculty come in uh, with the board and uh, you know discuss strategy, discuss the long-term goals, whether these programs, what the impact will be, what would you like to see happening. Things like that sort may be uh, very helpful to the board in comes to conclusion. Uh, the public forum is good, and getting students uh, coming up to speak and so on, and to get the first-hand sort of impression is also uh, valuable. But sometimes we need to have a little more deeper dive, and that probably takes another forum. And I would certainly suggest for anybody think this is a good idea, come to the board and suggest we will try to convince the uh, superintendent to hold this kind of a uh, special workshop. Okay, thank you. All right, well, I'm a little bit, I'm a little baffled. I'm just still trying to, trying to wrap my head around a, a couple of things. And I guess, you know, I've been on the board for six years and the IB program isn't that new anymore. Like the first kids that did the IB diploma program have graduated college already. The second co cohort are seniors in college this year. So we have pretty long history. And when I think back, it was a new program when I was first on the board and there weren't this many questions. Um, 
we would have sessions like this where the students would come and they would share their, their stories and their experiences and the teachers would share their stories and experiences and we were really learning about what the program was. But there wasn't this constant sense of trying to justify the expense. Um, and it, this year, the way IB keeps coming up and the questions keep coming up is reminding me very much of, you know, we seem to have themes that come through and pervade different years. A couple years ago, it was DEI, and we were constantly hearing the need to justify DEI and a DEI policy, and why do we have to do anything with DEI? There was, you know, there was a lot of questioning that came up with that. This year, it seems like IB is the hot topic, and I'm not really understanding why, after all this time, and after having students who have graduated college that went through the diploma program, we're still trying to justify the expense of a program that is benefiting students. Um, and as a school district, I'm really proud of the fact that we are offering both, that we, I, when I looked it up, pretty much every other district I can find in Westchester that's offering IB is only doing IB, or very, they have a, a few AP classes, not many. Um, so I think that recognition of different learning styles and choice is, is great, but also the courses that we're offering in AP, some of them are different from the ones in IB, so it just in, it in, improves the overall what we're offering there. Um, and uh, so I'm, you know, then I'm not understanding where we justify, where I'm not seeing any evidence that this program isn't working and isn't meeting the needs of students. Nobody's coming here saying, prove to us that the, it's worth spending the money that we're spending on Project Lead the Way. Nobody's coming and saying, prove to us that it's worth spending the money on the stipends and the entrance fees or whatever for science research. Nobody's coming to us saying, it's, you need to prove your, why you're spending this money on our football team or why we're spending this money on our arts programs. So why IB? And why, you know, where's the evidence that it's not working for our students and it's not meeting a need? I think I'm proud of our kids for what they have offered to us. Um, what are you pointing to? Which one on there? You're showing me something on the placemat. And oh, and that's a difference between, because that's IB diploma is only one facet of it. And that's the other thing that I think about. IB is touching so many students. You know, it's not just I, about IB diploma earners, and I don't know why there's a fixation on that IB only has a value if you get an IB diploma, because most of these kids are talking about individual courses and how it's benefited them. So I would I'm not going to get into question and answer, but <laughs> you can certainly call my office. We would certainly happy to sit down and talk to mm -hmm. you in great detail. Mm -hmm. So I can follow up on that just a little bit. Yeah. That's where, with that component. As Mrs. Scallon spoke earlier in the year at one of the board meetings, mm -hmm. the analogy to an IB student who will go through a full diploma, that's 11 classes of AP. Mm -hmm. We don't have a single student who would keep yeah. that. That is uh, a very, very large group. And as you know, uh, V and I talked a little bit there before where um, we're looking right now as a rising junior class. Mm -hmm. Right now is enrolled 31 children. 15% of our children now are looking actually at full diploma program. We're not pursuing that, but we're also looking at a number of increases in the AP program, like the AP uh, Physics 1 class, full class of 20 in there first off the bat. So it's choice that we heard as much tonight. So I, th I don't get that either, uh, because it is in and of itself something that is totally different from students taking you know, a singleton class or auditing it in different classes like Mark. Right. Said, so. I guess because that would be comparable sort of to AP Scholar with distinction. Or AP it, Scholar with those honors, are, those are like but, four classes, right? And that's not, not as many no. classes that they take, and we wouldn't, oh, you know, like. Dialogue. But but we overall have so many students taking APs, and we have you know oh, so many different students that are taking. I, I like the way Phil described it tonight too, where he said one student mm -hmm. did the AP work and ending going to pretty good school called MIT, mm -hmm. and then the other one did the IB kind of experience another pretty good school called Brown. So right. two different paths. Yeah. Two different journeys, two different success yeah. stories. 177 students last year. That, yep. in, and that's just in the diploma program, and not the students that are uh, benefiting from IB now in the younger right. grades yep. as well. well. Thank you. So maybe I could help try to explain, um, maybe from my point of view. Um, we heard earlier from some of the administration speaking that this is a new program, and this is why it's advertised so much. I don't think we've ever had a program that's been advertised in newspapers 
once, not once, but two or three times. So the more people see something new like this, which um, I guess we feel it's not, but administrators say we do, people are going to question. People are going to question costs. People are going to question the cost benefits of these things. And everybody here has the right to ask questions and question things because it's their hard-earned tax dollars. Um, the kids did an amazing job tonight. Um, they love it. Uh, it's evident that they're doing very well, and I applaud them. Um, but you take like tonight, we made this, I'm not sure who made this, but whoever did, did a pretty good job. Um, so it's advanced courses and offerings. So if you take like tonight as an example, and like I said, I love these kids coming out and speaking. It's, it's very hard to do public speak in front of people and cameras. But we have IB and AP on this sheet. And we didn't hear from one kid that has uh, been taking AP classes. So people may see that as, OK, this may be being pushed. Why are only these children here speaking about this if it's about all advanced course offerings? Um, so that's just my opinion. Um, I have heard from people in the public. Um, like I said, no other course or program has been advertised as much as this. One of us is, some of us are saying it is old, so why are we questioning it? And some are saying it's new, that's why it's being advertised so much. So you could kind of maybe see the confusion uh, that people were having, especially like I said, not one kid here from AP that have been taking AP courses throughout their high school career. Um, and like I said, everybody in this town, every community member, every taxpayer has the right to ask questions, whether it's about sports, IB program, AP, and whatever other programs we have, everybody has the right to ask questions how much things cost because at the end of the day, it's coming out of their pockets. I think um, I think this was created to, miss, to in response to some of the um, meetings from the past few months of people questioning the difference with the college credits and and different programs. But tonight's agenda was supposed to be about student voices and sorry, I wanted I don't want to um, from the SHS visit. And I believe, even though we did look at multiple types of courses, I believe it was focused around the IB program, if I'm not mistaken, when we went for our site visit. So I think that's why most of the students here were um, from that perspective tonight. And some of it was from MYP um, as well, because Tusker 101 in ninth and 10th grade is MYP level. It's not an IB course. Um, just to, to clarify too, Ife, I want to make sure you know that like there's many nights where parents are invited, parents and whoever wants to come, are invited to come for information nights on whatever the curriculum. There was a curriculum night at the high school this year. There was um, NYPIB nights when um, both at the middle school and the high school level um, for, the, for those offerings. And unfortunately, I find even at the coffees and everything else, you tend to talk to the same small set of people, um, but there is always the, those opportunities for those deeper dives, and I know I've been going to them, I know others have been going to them, um, but that's where you can really engage with um, our faculty. I think our faculty has been very accommodating to anybody who comes and answer, asks questions of um, the office for statistics and information on any of the course offerings we have, um, but I'd also just like to get over to the fact that I want to thank the students and the faculty who came tonight. I think it was so great. One word that kind of stuck out at me was all the kids talking about their passions and how engaged they, how much more engaged they are as learners because they're able to follow more of their passions and go in depth. Um, and that was right up there in our mission, mission statement of igniting a passion in all learners. And I think um, clearly that's what's being accomplished. So it's so great to see. Um, and that's all I have for tonight. Can I just jump in one more time? Because sure. I, I just want to round out a couple of things, too. Um, and I, I think my recollection, too, and I know we're both on the communication committee, is back at the beginning of the year. You know, we had been getting more questions about the IB diploma program, 
some of the, you know, as we're examining the middle years programs, and it was it was on the list to to evaluate the primary year program. So, so mm -hmm. there are some things, some aspects of the IB that certainly are new. Um, and any parent who's getting into high, whose children are getting into high school, well, for them, the offerings, AP, IB, whatever it is. That's pretty new to them, so they're they're going to have questions, yeah. and and I know we we had, we work at feeling more questions related to IB, and I think it was in the communication, one of our communication committee meetings at the beginning of the year, that we wanted to get more information out there. We and, and yeah. the district certainly has had lots of information nights, because a lot of the questions that we seem to be or the district seem to be receiving. We're, are covered in those, but somehow some of the questions kept resurfacing. So it was, it was, we were look, trying to look at how do we communicate in a multitude of ways, and one of them was, well, let's put the information also in, in the newspaper, and, and that's how that ended up getting in there. It was not do that first to sell it. It was really more in response to questions that were being asked that uh, um, and, and that were resurfacing and, and just trying to provide the information in another uh, another place. Um, I will say, did, did we have a hand in that as the board? Pardon me. Did we have a hand in that? Yes. That we had that, 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 in that the was paper. Not a, that was not a board decision. That that was we, we're just on the communication committee, and that that came out of there as a discussion. But that's something the board didn't put that out. That's something the district puts yeah, out about like the information I, uh, about the. I feel like I remember program. some kind of conversation about that to how to better. Yeah. When we were starting to get questions from people who didn't have kids was, in school, of how to better inform the community about yeah. what they were asking. So but those but. but Beyond that, I, I mean, that, that was just a historical thing about where that came from, because I think that question has con come up a few times recently is why were those out there, but that's my recollection. You can correct me if I'm wrong on yeah, that. Yeah, and I think, we're, I think there was a problem with um, trying to make sure we were cur like taking away um, misconceptions that were right. going out about IB, so people had a, an understanding, um, especially with the MYP program yeah. um, coming forward last year and being accredited, so. and. I don't mind questions at all. I, I think yeah. and it, it, I, I think that that's really important. And if there's something that you don't understand, um, or you heard something and you're concerned about it, by all means, please ask questions. Uh, it's mm -hmm. good for all of us. And I know as Dom and Pat both said, I, I totally totally agree with that. Um, I I think what I've always observed is that the district is really good and responsive at answering them and putting the information out there. Um, so I, I tried to say this at the last meeting and, and it, it, I just wanna make sure that when you're asking questions, uh, really important and healthy to do, have an open mind, um, you know, don't ask a question thinking that you already know the answer and you're gonna ignore any information. Um, always, and, and this goes for all of us, always be vulnerable to ask questions or have a notion, but have an open mind to what you're actually gonna learn when we look at the actual information. Yeah. So that, that's for all of us as a community, it's for us as board members, it's for um, uh, the district, the administrators, figuring out yeah. and making the decisions on, on curriculum. It's also for parents, for community members, for all of us. You know, we're all in this together and we're, we're trying to do the best, but we, we have to be open to the information that, that's coming to us and, and, and evaluate it in a healthy and open way. I agree, Chad, and I just want to say, like I just want to add, I think it's great to ask questions. I, I totally agree, and I think that what's important to remember, though, too, is that the school district is going to be the best source of where you're going to get the answers to the questions regarding the school district. Um, so, because I think that's kind of what ends up happening is like rumors fly around faster than you can kind of tackle them sometimes. Um, so, you know, go to the straight to the horse's mouth has always been my, I know we're all parents up here and we all have kids that have either gone through or going through the school district. And, um, you know, we all want the best for our kids, so. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah, just to clarify, there, I wasn't saying that nobody should ask questions. I hope it wasn't coming across that way. I think my question was more, Direct, my, my comment was more on why 
what I'm not what clear on why so many questions, and I can understand why it would concern students when you're hearing lots of questions that seem to be questioning the value of something that you appreciate about the schools, that then they feel like they have to defend, you know, like they're put in a position to feel like they have to defend yeah. it, or why, why the questions when we're not, n no evidence is being put forth that the program's failing students. So I guess that's, that's kind of why I was trying to get, we're getting the same questions over and over now when we hadn't had them before without seeing anything that indicates that there's a problem. So I guess that's where I, my, my wanderings were. Well, I don't think that they should feel that way. I mean, that's part of the IB way, right? It's the question, question the norm, question things. So by people questioning anything, it shouldn't make a group of people feel that something's going to be taken away. I don't know if that's being put, in, put to them that way, but part of the IB way is to question. Am I, is that correct, or am I speaking out of line? But I'm pretty sure it's an IB learner questions, questions things. And um, you know, I, I don't think that they should feel that anything's going to be taken away, because that's part of what they're learning to do, is to question. And I that's what that, a lot of people do. And you know, I do. And growing, I, growing up and coming into the world and being an adult, that's the things you should be doing. You should be questioning. And I understand that. I think the point is that, that what the kids are hearing, though, is that, they're, that, that certain, some people don't see the value in their programs that they're doing. And that's what they, they are expressing to us that they heard. And that is why they're, they're, you know, they were trying to give their... Well, that's why I ask for different forum for a workshop. Sometimes uh, when the board needs to have really direct, very in-depth questioning, you know, type of uh, period. It's not that it, you know, try to find problems or anything. It's just to understand and achieve the goal, uh, particularly long-term goal is what the board really should be concerned of. And I, I don't think we have to be defensive about every question. We should def be defensive of our policy, our final decision. But that process requires diligence in asking questions, accepting questions, and even in a forum that sometimes shouldn't be a, uh, just a public show type of thing or in terms of a, a marketing type of style. That's why I'm asking for the board to think about having those really dive deep, as you say, okay, sessions to uh, understand our strategy, our goal, whether we are you know, on the right path. And that's the right approach. It's not that you, know, you are right or wrong. We're not you know, debating that. I think it's their philosophy is for the board has to be inquisitive and um, intelligent. You, know? you, you don't take anything for granted. Well, I hope you're not implying that the kids were here for show tonight and they were just well doing what they were told. Th there's some some element that is your point i mean you, you don't have different students so on and so forth it's good to have student to show we want to see student perform well we want to see the excellence that exhibit through students i'm not saying that's not right <coughs> but certain level of questioning and answering and so on on the board level of a uh, thinking for long term goal involves different sectors, okay? I'm particularly pointing out faculty because I feel faculty is a key, mm -hmm. okay? So why can't we have a workshop with the faculty? Less math department, you know, English department, different social studies department and so on, and really understand our long-term, you know, sort of strategy. Wow, we, this school has been existing many, many years. I've been on the school board for 16 years. I really like to see that kind of process that guiding us. Okay. Okay. I think that's what our site visits were for, but okay. you're up. Okay. <laughs> uh, um, I'm going to just spin it a little bit back to where I was before with the conversation with access and belonging. Um, Mark and I had a chance, Mr. Barrett and I had a chance a little bit earlier in the learning office as well, too. One of the impetuses for our work here was to really ensure that all of our students belong in coursework that will challenge them. One of the pieces that the kids did speak a little bit about today, and one of our instructors in particular, about the Embedded Honors Program. 
So when we started on that journey, you would look at some of our uh, demographic groups that are typically uh, underrepresented in, in an honors course. For example, you could look at our IEP numbers, and I think, Pat, you showed the IEP numbers here before. If the student had an IEP, they were typically very underrepresented in honors courses, IB courses, or AP courses. We were just looking at some numbers as of late. So before the embedded honors courses, you would typically see, grab the entire population, about 50% of our kids would have taken a, uh, an honors course in the humanities area. That number now is at about 70%. So now that's gone from 50 to 70%, so belongingness. If you disaggregate that down a little bit, though, you think about a group, perhaps, um, are Hispanic families. So you would have had about a little bit less than 10% of students who are identified as Hispanic actually getting access to, but actually taking advantage of belonging in honors, you're almost at 60% now. So the fact of the matter is, is that all kids, all kids belong to the multiple pathways you heard about tonight. Mm -hmm. We did hear kids talk about Project Lead the way we did hear Sir talk about some AP experiences, some IB experiences as well too. I know when the folks did some walk about in that area and stuff. So um, I would say again, back to our mission today we talked about, personalizing the experience for all kids, engaging them, and so they are driving their instruction there. Again, I could not be more um, blown away by our, our faculty and by our children today, and um, so I hope the rest of the community is as well, too, so thank you. Okay. Be it resolved that this special uh, workshop of the Board of Education be adjourned. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.